the entire Kashmir region has a potential of being a Switzerland in South Asia. And by negating their voices and destroying their will um, for their rights, we are missing and losing that opportunity at the global stage. So that's all I had to say. And thank you again, Mr. Kazi. Thank you very much. Uh, now, we, before I invite the Honorable uh, Professor Marvin, uh, I would like to say this. The first, when I reached out to him, he was very gracious and kind enough to accept the request and accepted the invitation to join this dialogue. He is an expert on the region who handles the Afghanistan and Pakistan in that South Asia regions. Uh, our concern, our collective concern is the uh, letting the Taliban cut loose will have an implication in the neighboring countries, particularly in Kashmir. So he will be obviously educating us on the, on the issue. He's a director for Afghanistan and Pakistan studies here at the Middle East Institute. Please give him a warm round of applause and welcome him. He will share his remarks and then we'll have a few minutes. Professor, thank you very much. Thank you. It's a great opportunity to be able to speak, not just people who are gathered here today, but also to those out there who are experiencing what I think is generally recognized as one of the longest running injustices that we have, that we have witnessed uh, internationally. I'm speaking now as an outsider. And so I wanna say just a few words, which may be a little different, but as an outsider who has lived through this period, very much of the, of the history of this conflict, what saddens me is that we are by and large saying those things which have to be said for all these years. And it, I say it's saddening because if anything has changed over this time, certainly our rhetoric hasn't. We've, we've accumulated more and more information about the injustices that have been perpetrated. And we have, I think that we've done as good a job as we might have, although let me say that this new channel, this new channel will be very valuable to bring to the attention of the international community what is going on. Regrettably, the response has not been a good one. Even those countries that might have been expected, that might have been expected to stand up as Muslim countries for the people of Kashmir have not delivered. In fact, they've established ever stronger relations with India, which while they have not encouraged India on its Kashmir policy, has certainly not discouraged them. So I'm, I'm very conscious of the fact now that again, as an outsider, how can this change? Is there another strategy here? Because this is all about, this is not about Pakistan and India. This is about Kashmiris and, the, and their well-being. And we often lose sight of that because unfortunately, both India and Pakistan have sometimes made it an issue between them. And in the process, the Kashmiris got left out. All of these discussions that have been going on between India and Pakistan, and there've been some pl peace plans out there that have been created, uh, and they're very, some very equitable ones, but they've not, they've not led to anything, unfortunately, mostly because there were spoilers on both sides, for whatever reason, did not necessarily want to see this happen, and in fact, did not want to see an independent Kashmir, to give them at least, give Kashmir people at least the choice. So I throw really out to you, do we have any new strategies? 
because uh, yes, even armed conflict has backfired. It's backfired because not because brave people aren't haven't been willing to stand up and 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 great losses here, but it's backfired because it's created, unfortunately, in the international community, an equating of freedom fighting for terrorism. And this has been the strongest thing which has, has weighed here on the inability here to make greater progress. What has really changed in this time is 370, the revocation of 370. It's made things, we all know that, it's made things so much more difficult. And the accession to power of the of Modi's party, BJP, has been part of this. So I'm wondering here whether having, in spite of what I said here about India and Pakistan, whether progress has to wait a little longer for a change in the relationship between India and Pakistan, a relationship where this is no longer an issue, where, where freedom of movement and, and expression is acceptable. Uh, I don't want to take Kashmir off the front burner here as an issue, but it's going to have to share the burners with an effort here to do those things which have to be done between India and Pakistan. Trade, uh, um, yes, free, free movement of people, uh, cultural exchange, but also new issues which have arisen, which have an impact on everyone, especially perhaps the Kashmiris, uh, climate change. Uh, terrorism in general, global terrorism. So again, I don't have the answers, but we need now to think of new approaches which can not see Kashmir as the key necessarily to everything falling into place. It hasn't happened. What can we do which would, which would redound to the benefit of the Kashmiri people such that, and I hope this isn't heretic, to say it doesn't matter where you live, whether you live in an independent state uh, in, in Pakistan or, or in India, what matters here is that the people of this region who have suffered so greatly can, can be free, can, can live their lives fully. Well, uh, again, no, no answers here, but we, we, need, we need to reset our thinking here and say what now is going to work that hasn't worked in the past because we've said it so eloquent, eloquently uh, uh, here and elsewhere all the time. We've made a, a, a perfect case, but we haven't won over. Uh, what ways can we have? What ways can we change the whole context for this so that progress is possible? Thank you. Thank you, Professor Skidia, because we may have a few questions, see if you can answer those questions. Okay. Um, I would be the first one to ask this question. You have mentioned that there have been some highs and lows points with the Kashmir. You know, the perfect case was made in, in certain instances. You know, at the time of General Musharraf, we saw the four points. Uh, yes, 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 yes. You know, that was, we Kashmiri thought that that would be probably a step forward. Yes. Then we were pushed back so far back, and then uh, in the last our last president Trump made a comment when the prime minister of Pakistan was here, and he said, 
I will mediate uh, between India and Pakistan. Uh, and the Kashmiri raised their hopes, you know, thinking that the only power breaker in the world, that is USA, will be probably negotiating and finding some resolve for the people of Kashmir. And that didn't happen. Then February 22nd happens and President Biden makes a comment that we will remain impartial, neutral. Now, in your research, in your study, what do you think that where and how Kashmiri could knock the doors of the people, of the powers, if they keep playing these kind of emotional games with yes. us? Well, when, when then President Trump said, uh, we, want, we want to become involved, we heard him say that, but the rest of the sentence was the critical thing here. He said, if the parties agree to it. Yeah. Well, that's been the problem all along. India has not budged. And as I say, it's taken steps backward. Uh, you mentioned here the Musharraf four point uh, open borders. That's been the boldest move that we have seen. Uh, and it was essentially bureaucracies on both sides, which undercut that. And he was left out on a limb. And he paid a price for it, for having. But there have been, there've been promising statements from, from Pakistan. Uh, General Bajwa issued uh, a sense here that we've, we've got to establish a new, uh, a new approach here in our relationship with India, with Kashmir in mind. But then he did said, but we're not going to pursue this until Kashmir is settled. Well, that's the point. If Kashmir is settled, then it's not an issue anymore. And then Imran Khan, when he came in, suggested that he's ready to reset relations Other issues have intruded, particularly, of course, the revocation of 370. So that hasn't been uh, a way forward. So there have been there have been opportunities here, uh, and it that's what but that's what it's going to take. Whether we can make progress with this regime in India or not, I don't know. Uh, I'm I, I'm I, certainly it's hard to be optimistic in that regard, but we can't give up. Yes, please. Well, very nice answer, very good answer, but I would, I would think that it's going to be, uh, I would think there's a political answer, but here's a, here's a, here's a question that I'll ask you. Because uh, since Hinduata, the, the extreme, Hindu extremism is on rise in India, and rise of Taliban in Afghanistan. We, I foresee, because I have seen the Afghan conflict during the Soviet era, I have seen CIA headquarters in my town for the world, I have seen things firsthand. Based on that, I mean, do you see a resolution to it? Because what I see is that if Hindwata will not get back out, if the extremism will not get go down in India, and then Taliban on rise. I mean, we can see another insurgency within within the area because all, I mean, if you look at it, I was talking about the map. I mean, if you look at it, all they need to be Afghanistan mountains into Pakistan mountains into, into Gilgit, Baltistan, Kashmir, right there. And, and they have proven it in the past. And, and that's what I see because it may cause a conflict on a full-fledged war between India and Pakistan. And it's being mentioned that if it's gonna be a war, it's gonna be it can be subsequent issues for the rest of the world, no matter what we want to do at that point, I think it can be too late. So what do you yeah, think? Yeah. Let me say that there are some developments here which lead one to be concerned as you are. <clears throat> if the Taliban should the Afghan Taliban, should they come to power, 